Right, so for our last example, we're gonna extend um, a bunch of years into the future and look at object detection. So um, color tracking is very straightforward. Blob tracking has been around for a long time, but um, things like object recognition and in our next project, we'll talk about face recognition and skeleton tracking are tools that really come about because of artificial intelligence, machine learning, and neural networks that allow for really fast, robust um, ways of doing this. In, and today we could do it with real-time video, which is just bananas. Um, so we're gonna be using two kind of um, key tools here. Uh, the first is um, a neural network model trained on this data set called COCO, which stands for Common Objects in Context. Um, this you can see here is sponsored by, in, uh, among others, Microsoft and Facebook. And um, essentially it's a set of approximately 330,000 images um, that have then, um, that are in 91 different categories. So we've got things like airplanes and people and cell phones um, that this system then is trained on and is able to recognize. So COCO is um, the model, or sorry, is the data set that our neural network, our uh, machine learning model has been trained on. Um, and for that part of it, we're gonna be using this um, very amazing, very complicated, a JavaScript library called TensorFlow that was that's created by uh, Google. And there's a JavaScript version. It's awesome. It can run in your mobile phone. It's really optimized. It's super, super amazing. And it handles all the hard work for us. So I've got my video set up here. Oh, one other thing. Um, so the, I've created a list here of all the things that um, Coco can recognize. So you've got uh, a bunch of weird stuff. I certainly have not tested on broccoli yet um, or fire hydrants or giraffes for that matter, but there's a bunch of stuff here, which is really fun. Um, okay, so I've got my video set up here. The next thing I wanna do is load the model. Um, a model is um, like a really refined, carefully made set of numbers that then we can feed our video frame through and it's gonna spit out whether it thinks it's one of these objects. And in fact, not only just that, but what um, where it is on the screen and how certain it is that it found that object. It's really great. Um, so um, I wanna load my model and this does take 30 seconds, sometimes longer. So I'm gonna do console.log loading model. Um, and that's gonna let us know kind of what's going on. You could definitely um, consider trying to do this with like a loading screen or whatever. This is a very simple example. So you could easily extend this. Um, so then we're gonna say coco ssd.load. That's gonna load the model. Then coco ssd and this funky syntax that we haven't talked about before. It's called arrow syntax. Um, and it's just another way of creating a function. And let's just let us know that it was loaded. And then our model is going to be equal to Coco SSD. Um, a lot of this extra work is happening in our index file. I can open that up here. Um, so our index loads TensorFlow for JavaScript and this particular model. So that's handling all the stuff. So Coco SD.load, all this is part of TensorFlow. Um, so let's run this. And if we look in our console here, we can see it's loading the model and I'm frozen, looking amazing. And it does take a second, there we go. So now it's loaded. Okay, so that's all we need to do in setup. And then in our draw. So like we've covered before, we wanna know if our, um, our video is working. So we're gonna say if video.width is greater than zero. And we wanna know if the model has been loaded yet. So if model does not equal undefined. Great. So that's going to check both those things because we're going to plug them into each other. Now, this is where adding, using a, an external library gets a little complicated because um, we can't just plug in P5.js stuff into TensorFlow, unfortunately. Um, so I need to get our image data from the video frame to be able to feed in. And to do it, we need it in a particular format. And I'm going to use this command here. So I'm going to create a variable called image data. Um, that's grabbing from our drawing context. Drawing context refers to our canvas here. Dot get image data, this does it in a particular format. We're starting from zero, zero, and we're getting the whole screen. Um, this is essentially like load pixels, but it does it in a way that's a little different. 
Um, then we can run our detection. So we're going to say model dot detect. Uh, oops, detect IMG data. Then, um, and then is another JavaScript thing that's um, really great for things that take time. So um, model.detect is going to run in the background. And when it finds um, a prediction, then it's going to give us that back. So predictions, again, this arrow syntax. Um, and this is pulled from an example. So I've sort of just modified it to work here. Um, and it's going to give us a list of predictions. So we could say console.log predictions. And let's do no loop. I think that should work. Let's see. So here we are. Again, it's going to take a little bit because it's got to load the model, which is really slow. And there we go. So it's printing us an array. In this case, the array is a length of zero. It hasn't found anything yet, but that's cool. We can see that this is working. OK. Next, um, we can go through all the predictions. Uh, this system is able to find multiple objects in the frame all at the same time. So. Um, we're using this different um, for loop syntax again, which will give us uh, the prediction from this list. And um, we can grab some info about it. So again, I'm going to copy and paste this here. Our prediction includes a bounding box, which is at zero. Um, it has four values, x, y, width, and height. It also has um, a class, which is the name of the, oh, we can't call a variable class here. Um, it has a class, which is what object it thinks it is. And it also has a score that's um, between zero and one as a prediction of how accurate it, um, it is. So let's go ahead. We can draw our box around uh, no fill and a rectangle at X and Y width and height. And let's go ahead and also display the confidence score here and the class. I'm just going to stick this in. OK. So now when we run this, we should see, <laughs> once again, I'm frozen um, with a totally normal face. There we go. So now it's drawing, hopefully you can see, it's drawing a, a box around me. It says I'm a person, which is reassuring. And it says it's around a 92, 94% chance um, or, confidence that I am a person, which is awesome. Um, now, if I move, it may think, sometimes it thinks that uh, my amp is a laptop or a TV, which is funny. Um, we can see if it will, we're going to see the orange. I brought some fruit. We could try. There we go. Banana is pretty good with that. Um, now, depending on where I'm at in the frame, it may or may not be as reliable, but you can see it's running really fast. It's tracking me around. Um, if I get too close to the edge, it is going to lose me, and the same thing on the other side. But overall, this is truly amazing. The fact that it's able to do this so quickly using real-time video, um, I don't know, it just blows me away. The fact that you know your brain can do this, but that we've taught a computer to do this is really, really incredible. Um, again, lots more you could do with this. This is really meant to be a super bare bones way to see how you get this data. Um, but you could, for example, Let's say we only want to see bananas. So we could say if p.class does not equal a banana, then we can skip ahead. So if it's not a banana, we're not going to do anything. This way you could filter out and only include, <laughs> model's loading again, um, only include objects that you want to have it be able to see. So it's showing me my banana, but it's not seeing me. Um, and you could certainly then use this to do all kinds of cool stuff. You could have it display um, something else. You don't even need to have the video being displayed. So you could hide this and instead, you know, do something like this. And um, you could use those X and Y positions or compute the center of that bounding box to have your banana like control a, a game of Pong or something like that. Um, so, you know, for you, I want you to think about what, oh, we don't have our camera. Here we go. Um, are you seeing our banana? This is the problem with not having the video. Um, anyway, <laughs> but the way you plug these things in um, is really up to you and thinking about cool ways of using this. But um, luckily, I think this is pretty straightforward within 
P5JS, there's not that much you have to do to get this working, but the power of this is, is really awesome. And I think it sparks all kinds of creative ideas. Um, there's one more example that we're not gonna look at here, but you may wanna check out, um, and it shows you um, a little bit about why you might wanna use lower resolution video for this kind of thing to improve performance. And it also shows you how to do smoothing um, where uh, we keep track of maybe the previous five or 10 positions for that object, which gives us a more smooth motion. So you might wanna check that out. There's no video for that, um, but hopefully this gives you some cool ideas of how you can use this stuff.